filled in the Holy Ghost. Can you begin to pray that the word will have impact, the word will think into your spirit. You will become a word carrier after this revolution. You are making impact in the globe. You are making impact in your nation. You are making impact in your community. You are making impact in your family. God is using you to make impact across by the power of the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and pray that the word sink in you. The word sinks in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We are sharing the right move of a man of God. The right move of a man of God. In this life, a lot of men are walking. A lot of people are moving on the face of the earth. But not all moving men are men of God. Not all moving women are women of God. So, who is a man of God? A man of God is a man created by God. A man of God is a man prepared by God. That is a man of God. So, when you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God said, let us create man in our image after our likeness. So, a moving being in the hand of of God is a man of God. Any moving being outside the hand of God is moving as a being, but it's not a man of God. This shows that anybody who is born of God is a man of God. And you may be a female, Jeremy, you are a man of God. Because of the world we are in, you may be addressed as a woman. But in Galatians 3.20 it says, For there is no male nor female. For we are all sons in Christ Jesus. In Christ, whether a male or a female, you are a son. And therefore you qualify to be a man of God in the hand of God. Now, the hand of God is no other person but the word of God. So, Jesus Christ is the word of God. In the beginning was the word, according to John 1.1. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And it says that, and the word became flesh. He became a human being. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, the word of God is the word that creates man. And this word of God, who is Jesus, is seated at the right hand of God. He's seated at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. So, Jesus is that word of God. And if Jesus is the word of God, and Jesus after he came on the face of the earth, Bible says that he is lifted up in glory and he is seated at the right hand of God. So, a man of God is a man created by God and Jesus is the right hand of God with the word of God, meaning that a man of God is a man born of the word, seated at the right hand of God. That is a man of God. So, Anybody who has received the word, John 1 12, as many as believed in his name, he gave them the right to become sons of God. So these men are born of the word, they are men of God. The right move of a man of God. It means that there is a wrong move of a man who is not of God. If there is a right move, then surely there is a wrong move. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, when God formed man, verse 7, of the ground, God breathed into that man. So that man formed in Genesis 2, 7, 
is a man breathed by God. It's a man who is made by God. And when God made that man, he took a step. He made a move. And the move of that man was a move of naming, a move of authority, a move of creating. So the man said, you are called water and that becomes your name. The man said, you are called sky and that becomes your name. The man said, you are called a lion and that becomes your name. This man made of God took a move by naming creation. He had authority in naming because he's a man of God and he took the right move. He took the right step. Hallelujah. Now, this same man in Genesis chapter 3 fell. It means that the man has lost the hand of God. The man has lost the word of God because God said to the man, the day you eat of the knowledge of good and evil tree, you shall die. It was a word and that word is the word seated by the right hand of God. And a man who is addressed as a man of God is a man made by God, a man made by that word. And the man did not believe the spoken word. So that man lost the authority. He lost the right move. He was moving in the hand of God. So it came to a time. This same man said, I am naked. This same man was dominated by the world because he has lost the right move as a man. So, this brings the two distinctions. A man of God is a man created by God. A man born of God. And that man takes the right move. A man walking who is not of God is a man who has left the word of God. Who has rejected the word of God. And that man is also walking without the right move. He's moving in the face of the world, but the world is the one moving him. He's not the one moving the world. So the first man who was in the hand of God was the one moving the world. He said, you are called this. It was the move. You are called this. It was the move. But the man who fell in Genesis chapter 3 was now moved by the world. Sir John 2.16 says that all that there is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now, this man was moving with the eyes. Adam, where are you? I am naked. So he's moved by what he's seeing. He's not taking the right move as a man. From there, the scripture said, man continued to multiply on the face of the earth. So there is a creation, a population. But the population of man on the face of the earth is a population of men who are not of God. It's a population of men who are not born of the word. So they are populating all right, but they are not taking the right move. So we have seen two moves. The right move by the first Adam before the fall and the wrong move by that same Adam after the fall. Two communications. That was what was taking over. And after this man had fallen, you and I came out of that man. And when we came out of that man, we also lost the hand of God on us and that is why we couldn't take the right move so darkness is dominating over man darkness is dominating your home darkness is dominating your family darkness is dominating your community it is dominating your nation but god has his word when you allow that word with jesus to have expression in your life 
you begin to name, let there be light. And light begins to take over that darkness. Let there be light. Light takes over your finances. Let there be light. Light takes over your marriage. Let there be light. Light takes over your ministry. So whatever makes you to take a move, which is not the right move, when the word of God terminacles, when the word of God abides, when the word of God dwells in you, you begin to take the right move. You begin to take the right step. You begin to declare and things that becomes impossible will turn into possibility. Things that become a challenge will become your glory. And that is what we are talking about. That this era and in this season, the word of God has come again. And that word is Jesus. Anybody in the hand of Jesus is a tool to be used rightly. Anybody in the hand of Jesus is a tool to be used for the move of God. And that is why we have come to you. That you will not be subject to the word, but the word will be subject to you. And for the word to have subjection to your word, then you must allow the word of God, which Jesus, to have expression, to have manifestation, to have intercourse, to have fellowship with your spirit. And by so, you will begin to take the right move. You will begin to take the right move. Hallelujah. Now, when Jesus came on the face of the earth as the word of God, a time came in Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Jesus was moving with a group of people. And when he was moving with them, they took a boat and they went on the sea. And as they were in the boat moving, as they were in the boat moving, Jesus took a pillow and began to sleep in the boat. The disciples were with Jesus. They didn't have a pillow. They were sitting and they were watching. They were aggressive. They were looking at the situations of life. I don't know what you are looking at at this moment of time. I don't know what you are focused on. But Jesus took a pillow in the boat. And as they were going, the word said the storm began to beat. And it began to increase to the point that the storm began to bring water into the boat. And the boat began to be full. It was increasing. The water was entering the boat. But the people who were with Jesus, they were men. But they started complaining. They started complaining at the storm that was moving. Instead of them to take the right move, they were complaining. They were men, but they weren't taking the right move. They were men, but they weren't seeing the right move. But Jesus was still lying down with his pillow on his head. And the disciples said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And the scripture continued to say, And Jesus rose in the boat and said, Peace be still. And that storm that was blazing, that storm that was blowing against them, began to be calmed. Jesus took the right move as a man of God. When you are a man of God, you are able to take the right move. He stood in the boat, even though he was a man, but he wasn't just an ordinary man. He was a man of the word. And when he stood in the boat, he said, Peace be still. And the boat and the storm, everything came to a standstill. The disciples were with him. The disciples were moving with him. But they were complaining. You are complaining in that situation. You are complaining in your marriage. You are complaining in your ministry. You are complaining in your family. You are complaining in your nation. But I came to tell you that in this revolution, a word of God has come. It is full of power. It is full of glory. It is full of authority. As many as received that word, it gave them the power. It gave them the audacity. It gave them the ability so that by your speaking, every storm in your life will come down. By your speaking, every challenge will come down. By your speaking, every darkness will come down. By your speaking, every storm will come down. It took the right move. You may be a man. But don't walk as a man. Jesus was walking with them as a man. He even had pillow with him. But when the storm came, he stepped out of man because he has received a certain word. Because he's carrying a certain word. He came out of that man and began to speak. And that storm came down. 
and that is why Isaiah 9 says said uh, unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given you are a man as a child but out of you is a son you have a selfish spirit in you so I came to tell you that in the midst of the storm in the midst of the curiosity in the midst of the darkness let the sonship in you rise up there's a right way to take a step there's a right way to move there's a right way to speak you are moving as a man but a man of God is not just a man but a man carrying the sonship spirit and in the midst of the situation in the midst of the darkness in the midst of the challenges the sonship in you will begin to rise and you begin to declare let there be peace uh, and there is peace uh, I speak into somebody hearing me that every storm in your life uh, every situation in your life uh, maybe you are seeing me as a man but I came to tell you that that which is born of the spirit is a spirit and that which is born of the flesh is a spirit fresh uh, by the spirit of God that is in me I proclaim life uh, into that situation I proclaim life uh, into your marriage I proclaim life uh, into your family I proclaim life into that situation anything you are doing that has become a challenge by the moving sonship uh, of a man of God by moving rightly as a man of God I declare that storm is cursed uh, that storm is made still that storm is brought low by the power of the Holy Ghost a man in the hand of the word is a man of God. If you have received this Jesus, don't walk as a mortal man. In you is an immortal man. There's an inner spirit in you. Speak to that situation. Rise up in that family. Rise up in that community. Rise up and speak. And that storm will be still. I leave you with the peace of God. I leave you with the glory of God. I leave you with the grace of God. Shalom. Shalom.